Today I am going to show you about this little device right here. This is called the Y-Spy. It is a poor man's 2.4 GHz spectrum analyzer. This and a computer can take the place of a $10,000 piece of equipment depending upon what your needs are. Uh, 2.4 GHz is a very popular unlicensed radio spectrum, unlicensed set of radio frequencies if you will. Uh, very common today, used by wireless networks, this happens to be a Netgear Wi-Fi USB stick, uh, used for Bluetooth, like for headsets, for cell phones and whatnot. Uh, there is also, uh, it's used for security cameras, uh, some of your cheaper security cameras that you can get through Radio Shack, Walmart, that sort of thing. Um, in use for quite a few things today. And what I'm going to do is show you how you can use this device to view and see how much of activity is going on in your neck of the woods on that operating or on those operating frequencies. So we're going to go ahead and jump over to the software that goes along with this. On Windows, that software is called Channelizer. Uh, there are third-party software programs equivalent to Channelizer available for Linux and for the Mac. Uh, those will be linked to. Um, I will try to provide some links for that to add to the show notes and also to put at the end of the segment so that you can, if you get one of these, you know where to go and get the software for it. These are available for about $100 or so on various places on the Internet. They do have a new version of this out that actually has this version has an antenna built in they have a new version that has an RPSMA connector so that you can just go ahead and attach your own antenna to it um, the other option you have you could mod this following one of Fox's segments from a previous episode I'm not going to do that to mine however I'm going to leave it intact just how it is because for my purposes this way works just fine so we're going to go ahead and switch over to the channelizer software running on a Windows machine and I'll show you what this thing actually does and how this thing can help you if you're trying to track down an interference issue. This is Channelizer. I have the About Channelizer screen up, as you can see. It was made by MetaGeek, available at metageek.net. Go ahead and close that. This is the main Channelizer view. Uh, normally there are three graphs that you can look at. The spectral view, the topographical view, and the planar view. Uh, we don't really care about the topographical view. It is interesting information, but it is not really that pertinent to what I'm going to be showing you today. So I'll just go ahead and give you a brief rundown of what the different views actually are. We'll start with this bottom view. This is called the planar view. You have a green bar on the bottom. You have a blue outline here, and then you have this red line that's jumping around. The red line that's jumping around is going through and showing you what the current readings are for that column of data. The way that the Y-SPY and this software operates is it goes through a sweep, and a sweep is a pass from here to here, and in that sweep what it's doing is it's tuning the Y-SPY to a specific frequency, and then it's asking what does the Y spy hear signal strength wise? So are we do we hear a strong signal? Do we hear a weak signal? Then it tunes it to the next frequency, which is another column on here, and it does the same thing again. And it does that through its entire range here, and we call that a sweep. So what you see here, this red line, are the actual results of the current running sweep. What you see in blue is the maximum value that was seen at the time for that specific column. So right here, this was a peak, that's the maximum value that has been seen for this frequency, which is right at around 2.432, uh, somewhere in there, gigahertz. Or over here, where we have an, obviously a lot of activity, we have a lot of the, the peaks. Uh, down here where the center of it is around 241.2 or so, uh, showing you the, the maximum values there. And then we've got some other activity here. Um, this upper view is a history view of that red line. So I can see this line here, this represents 5 seconds ago. This line here represents 10 seconds ago. And this line here represents 15, etc. You can control exactly what they mean by sliding this slider around. 
But for now, we're just going to go ahead and leave them as is on the default, which is five seconds for this space right here. Now, this is showing you a history. This is saying five seconds ago, this is what the picture looked like. Then 10 seconds ago, that's what the picture looked like. So you can see kind of uh, over time the different shapes being created by the wireless signals that are in your area. This area here, I'll go ahead and tell you, is my access point. Uh, this area here is my neighbor's access point across the street. I have the Y spy currently uh, attached to a swing arm, uh, what's well, actually the sw a swing arm for a lamp, uh, but I've basically got the Y spy with some elevation so that it can s very clearly see and hear the neighbor's access point across the way. Plus the access point, this access point here is in the same room with the Y spy, so there's definitely going to be no no problems hearing it. You can see some shaping here. It's kind of a diagonal line. Now unfortunately Channelizer doesn't run that well whenever I'm recording on Cam Studio on this machine. This machine is only a single core. It does not have enough processing power to run Channelizer well and do the screen recording that I'm doing. So instead, I'm getting a little more incomplete picture of what's going on. But for the purposes of this video, it is going to be good enough. But as you can see here, we've got kind of an overall a diagonal pattern with a whole lot of, of gapping between things. So the signal usage is kind of sweeping through. And that is a behavior that goes along with Wi-Fi type networks. They don't just sit on one frequency. They're actually doing frequency hopping, just jumping around the spectrum. Uh, there are different ways that that can be done. Some is through frequency hopping spread spectrum, and some is through direct sequence spread spectrum. If you want to see what those actually mean, I would recommend uh, checking out Wikipedia uh, or doing a Google search to find out more information about those. Not really important other than to say that instead of being a constant frequency, it is jumping around in frequencies, going through and doing its own sweeping, and that's how it actually carries the Wi-Fi data through the air. Now, on this screen, down here at the bottom, we have written out what the current frequency is for this column or this column or whatever column we're working with. This column here represents 2.41 gigahertz, whereas this column represents 2.45 gigahertz. That's not really that useful whenever we're trying to use this for doing some looking around to see what Wi-Fi is in the area. So I'm going to change the, the labels for the x-axis right here to Wi-Fi. And now we have channel designations down here, 1 through 11. There are also 12, 13, and 14, but those channels aren't allowed for use in the U.S., so I'm not going to really touch on them that much. Um, but we'll go ahead, and I'll just go ahead and tell you that my access point here, this one that's got a really strong signal, runs on channel 1. So I'm going to go ahead and click on 1. That highlights it. So you can see this expanse here represents channel 1. And you can see that almost all of that that it is hearing is contained within that rectangle. Now there's a little bit out here, and it may just be because the Y Spy is not the perfect is not a perfectly tuned piece of hardware, and it may be because my access point is not perfectly tuned. I don't have a more expensive uh, spectrum analyzer, so I can't really tell you. I don't have access to a more expensive spectrum analyzer. Otherwise, I would love to show you the differences between this and a, a what most or what a lot of people in the industry would, would term as a real spectrum analyzer. Don't have those resources, so we're going to have to make do with what we've got. But just to show you, this is encompassed here with this channel 1 marker. Now, my neighbor across the street runs his access point on channel 11. And as you can see, all of this traffic very well contained within the boundaries of channel 11. Now, if I were coming in here, and this was not my access point, and this was not my access point, but I wanted to put an access point in, I would probably try to put it here into this empty area. I would look at these graphs, see, oh, hey, this one's really strong. This one's, you know, not really strong, but it's strong enough that I could use it. But this area here is pretty empty, so if I'm going to put a new access point in, I'm going to put it either on channel 6 or on channel 7 there, uh, just based on the results of this graph. Now, it would not be a good idea for me to put it on channel 1. I could put it on channel 1, 
but since there's already somebody there, it's best for me to leave that alone and just... It's kind of one of those playfair kind of deals. I would be causing him interference, he would be causing me interference, so we're better off separating a little bit, and by separating, then we don't stomp all over one another. Another thing to watch out for is wireless video. Wireless video, or the cheap wireless security cameras that you can buy, the ones that operate on 2.4 gigahertz, actually probably all of them, but I've only ever seen uh, what I'm about to show you in the case of 2.4 gigahertz, they're very noisy on the spectrum. I'm going to plug in one of the video cameras that I've got that is a wireless one. And as you can see, the red line down here went nuts. The blue area expanded considerably. And we have this very nasty area here where it is just very, very thick. Looks almost like a weather radar picture of something. Um, that is what wireless video looks like to 